Hi again everyone, sorry about the interruptions, I've got a bit of a bad signal. What I was going to say is, at the end of the last broadcast, Scotland, in order to be independent, needs to sell its oil fields, or at least most of them, to our English neighbours. If we sell them to our English neighbours, we will make a fortune overnight. And that is money that we can just simply put in the bank. But remember, oil fields need to be decommissioned at, their end, at the end of their lifespan. And in about 50 years' time, the North Sea is going to start decommissioning dozens and dozens and dozens of oil fields. And the cost of that has to go somewhere. At the moment, the oil companies are supposed to, and I'm saying supposed to, clean up their own mess. But I'm pretty sure the Tories are not going to force them to do it. And the taxpayers, you and I, will end up footing the bill for cleaning up the mess that the oil industry will leave in the North Sea. So I would suggest that as a precursor to our independence campaign that we make an offer to the rest of the United Kingdom. Say everything from Shetland eastwards in the North Sea we will sell to them in terms of oil fields. We'll keep our gas fields but we'll sell them all of our oil interest. We'll sell them at a, an excellent low price but something which will give us a huge shot in the arm. Billions of pounds straight into our treasury to begin a new country. Remember that the fossil fuel industry is going to die away. All the stories about plastic you know, cluttering up the ocean, that is coming from the oil industry. The chemicals from oil are being used to manufacture billions of tons of unnecessary plastic wrapping. If that was just stopped overnight, the pollution going into the seas would stop overnight. The oil industry is largely responsible for the plastic pollution and the air pollution that we see around us, and it's contributing to global warming. If Scotland is serious about being independent and also being a clean green country with a new industry, a new green industry, then we need to stop burning oil, dealing in oil, drilling for oil. We need our gas to keep ourselves warm in the meantime, and gas is a relatively low carbon fuel and it's quite plentiful at the moment. We should hang on to that. Stop drilling for oil at all in the North Sea, and just say everything west of Shetland and down the western seaboard of Scotland and into the Irish Sea will be our oil fields from now on. Now by doing this, as I say, we fund the Central Bank of Scotland and we give England what it needs, which is the oil money and revenues that it depends on at the moment to get through the difficult times it's creating for itself with Brexit. In the meantime, Scotland is set up, ready to go, ready to negotiate a new deal with Europe, which doesn't have to be Brexit, it can be anything we want. We can also work to help England to sell goods through into um, the European Union, into Ireland. We can keep the Irish border open because Scotland can be an intermediary between uh, one country in the EU and the UK. So no problems there, everybody wins, everybody gets what they want. Scotland gets a nice clean break and also we get enough money into our central bank and our investment bank to build new industries for the future. These will be clean industries involving tidal and offshore wind power, electric vehicles, electric cars, electric trains, electric buses, electric everything, even electric heating eventually because we will be generating so much electric power that we'll have spare energy to use to heat everybody's homes and then we can switch the gas off as well and sell our gas interests too. By divesting ourselves of these old-fashioned uh, energy supplies using fossil fuels, we will be equipped for the new millennia ahead and we'll be leading the way in terms of green energy all the time. This is the future we can only have if we're independent and if we are backed to running our own affairs. The fly in the ointment at the moment is still going to be nuclear weapons because as people keep pointing out, America needs a, an offshore site for its European missiles and Scotland is a handy place for that. It's possible, but I don't know how likely it is, that Northern Ireland might be used as an alternative site if a suitably remote uh, post um, harbour and so forth can be built to take the submarines and the, the missiles that the, the UK seems to be desperate to hang on to. But no matter what it is or where it goes, it's always going to be a problem for Scotland. So we need a negotiation about Trident as well, but we can do that from a position of independence much more easily than we can from within the UK. So I'm saying to you now that we don't put Trident out there immediately 
as as the price. It's not the it's not the thing that we have to do straight away with independence. That can be negotiated. It sat here for all these years in in the uh, the loss of Scotland. It can sit for a, a couple more years while we figure out with the United Kingdom where they are going to take those missiles to. So we don't want to be unreasonable about this. Remember, we're trying to negotiate with a near neighbour. We're not trying to create a new enemy. So if they feel that the security of Europe is enhanced by nuclear weapons, then they can look for a new site for them. But we, as Scots, do not have to basically force them out straight away and have these nuclear submarines endlessly circling the United Kingdom looking for somewhere uh, which will allow them to dock. That just wouldn't be reasonable. So these are radical ideas, and not everybody is going to agree with me, and I know that. But I'm putting them to you now because I want you to think about it. If you think about this logically, we're talking money here. This is it's money that, that the, the United Kingdom needs after Brexit. It needs its oil, and because of its, uh, its, basically its connection with the United States and NATO, it needs somewhere to put its nukes. We give them the oil. As a bit of a present, we sell them. We sell them at a knockdown price in exchange for them promising to take Trident away, say, within four or five years, something like that. That way we get an agreement with them right at the beginning that they're going to have an easy separation from Scotland. We're not going to make it difficult for them. They will be able to survive and they won't need to hang on to us anymore because we will already have what we need. Just selling those oil fields to England will create enough money for the entire central bank of Scotland to capitalise itself and to capitalise its new currency. Why hang on to something as old-fashioned and dirty as oil when we don't need it? We need the money to set up a new country. Selling the oil to England is the most logical way to defuse the situation and bring England on side so we're all friends again, everybody gets what they want, everybody gets what they need. There's nothing wrong with thinking this way. Life doesn't have to be a battle. This is business that we're talking about. And one thing I've learned from running a couple of businesses is that there's no sentiment in business. We don't need to wave flags. We don't need to hate each other. But at the same time, we don't even need to like each other. But we need to get along and we need to trade. And if people would put their emotions aside and think about this logically, this is a possible way of doing it. Anyway. That's all I have to say. Have a good Easter. Okay, I'm off for about four days up to the Highlands for a holiday with the family. So I'm packing a snow shovel and my snow covers for the tyres. <laughs> and I'm hoping the weather doesn't get too bad tomorrow. But listen, everybody, have a happy Easter. And remember, and this is no joke, the BBC is actually wanting to start hiring the, the cyber nuts that it has been complaining about for so long. It could be that I'm being... I'm being tricked and this is just a big April Fool hoax, but I suspect there's a bit of truth in the latter part of this memo, that they are actually thinking of hiring or offering programmes to a number of cybernats that they are going to cherry pick in the hope that they can somehow get us on board and defuse us and stop us complaining about the BBC's biased coverage. Anyway, we shall see. Anyway, have a good Easter. And I'll see you when I get back. I'll be broadcasting again probably next Sunday. Might be Monday, but don't hold me to it. I'll see you soon. Have a good Easter, everyone. Bye for now.